Ladies, gentlemen, and puppets of all ages, Liza P is quite possibly the best Souls-like game, of course, to be specific, I mean the games that aren't made by FromSoft, and a big part of why it is so good in my eyes is all of the little details. They got combat to feel great in general, which is by far the biggest hurdle in making one of these games good, but then from there what makes the game as a whole feel great, interesting, and engaging is just the breadcrumbs of little things here and there, nuggets of lore, hidden items just as you can unlock that have effects elsewhere in the game, puzzles to solve. There's a lot going on in the game, and today we're going to dive into the mid-game sort of section and go over 10 important unlocks and secrets absolutely worth finding and using within your gameplay. We won't be going over weapons here, as weapons aren't really secrets, though they may be a bit off the beaten path. It's really easy to just look up the weapons in the game and when you should get them, and then just go from there. But there are things that are a bit harder to find than those, and that's the main purpose today. First up then, let's talk about the biggest thing that you can unlock in the mid-game, and it's going to be the ability to respec your character. Quite simply, the ability to reset your levels, your P organ, or your lesion arm, pretty much any part of your character that you have put upgrade time into, and receive a refund of any of the currency that you spent doing so so you can reorganize it how you choose. This game treads an interesting line. There are definitely people who think the idea of changing builds doesn't really belong in a Souls-like game, but I think it opens up more avenues for fun, honestly. This game cuts it down the middle by offering the ability to change up, limiting it somewhat by having a cost, and putting it in the seventh chapter of the story, which is extremely deep, honestly, for your first playthrough. So you're stuck with your choices from the start, but if you find a weapon that you really like the look of that doesn't match the build you started with, you can eventually change it up. As far as unlocking it then, you need to beat the big boss of chapter 7, Champion Victor. After you do that, a cutscene will play and then you will receive a key at the end of it. From here, head back out of the entrance to the boss room rather than continuing onwards, go back up these stairs and then out of the exit on your right to hit the grand exhibition. If you go to the other side of this large room, you will see an ornate door here. Open up the door using the key that you got and you will arrive at the Saintess of Mercy statue. This will let you use your gold coin fruit to reset your level, your P organ upgrades, or your legion arm upgrades, and you can reset them entirely separately. Every time that you reset one of these, the cost of that reset will go up, but gold coin fruit are simply a time-based thing, not an amount-based thing. They're not limited in how many you can get, just how long you have to wait until you have them. So technically, you can do this pretty infinitely, even if it does definitely have a cost. It's really awesome, really effective, and if you've been wanting to try out another weapon that totally didn't fit your starter build, this is definitely one you would do. It. From this point, we're going to go back a couple of chapters and go in chronological order of the things that I want to show you, the secrets I have to share, but I thought respecting was important enough of a thing to tell you about right off the top. Secondly, then, today we have the Prey Gesture, which comes with the Divine Service Record and the Workshop Union Strengthening Frame Defense Part, so really just one thing that you need to find that enables a chain of events if you do things right, which drops a lot of things for you, which is pretty neat. Honestly, this is basically item two and three, let's be honest, with some bonuses even on top of that. Start off then at the Saint Frangelic Cathedral Library Stargazer, and behind some bookshelves on your left from the spawn location is an NPC named Cecile. She will ask you to get her the Archbishop's Holy Mark, and we are going to do so. Continue through the level until you reach this creepy, leshen looking dude, and then on the right side of the room, there is a little staircase that heads up in a sort of curved manner. Go up these stairs, and at the end of the corridor that will be in front of you, outside the arch on your right, is a little platform. Cross this the entire way, and you will see a fancy looking room. The item on the floor of the room is the Archbishop's Holy Mark, and then if you open the safe in the back of the room, you get the Workshop Union Strengthening Frame, which is pretty solid. Bring these back to Cecile in the Library Stargazer, and she will thank you and give you a consumable. But if you then come back here after you finish the big boss fight of the chapter not long afterwards, Cecile will be gone, and on the floor, instead of her being there where she stood, is a record and a letter. Then, after you pick those up, make sure to make it even deeper by reading every page of this letter, which will then unlock the Prey Gesture, which just it feels like so many layers, but it's great that it's there. Fourth today is going to be the Bell Belford Superior Corrosion Resistance Converter, that's a mouthful. But this is in Chapter 5, moving from the first Stargazer, the Path of the Pilgrim, continue forwards until you reach a sort of torn down village looking area with houses and shacks and such. From the entrance, head left, break the boxes that are in front of you and cross onto the roof that is there. Then below, you will see an item on the ground. When you go up to this item, a mini boss will come in from the gate in front of you, busting it wide open. When you've defeated the mini boss, it'll drop the Slum Shack key, and surprisingly enough, if you turn around on the spot, the shack right in front of you is the exact door that this key is for. If you go in there, you will find a chest, inside of which is this resistance converter. This one is really big for decay and acid resistance, so it's absolutely ideal when dealing with enemies of that type, which there are tons of at this stage of the game. 
Fifth up, we have the Black Cat's Amulet, and this is a bit of a fun one involving the Trinity Key system. Starting in Chapter 5 at the second Stargazer, the Malum District, you want to progress that level until you reach this large, crazy, bonfire-type structure in the middle of a square. Continue around past this and take a couple of lefts to get into a building. Follow through on the right to get to a ladder, and at the top of this ladder, you will find a phone. The phone will ask you a riddle, answer the riddle, and if it he finishes his little one-sided dialogue, if you get it right, he will give you the Trinity Key. Now, this is the fun part, because the door this opens is actually Actually in Chapter 4, from the St. Frangelico Cathedral Chapel Stargazer, you want to progress forwards until you reach the big rolling ball trap corridor, you know the one I'm talking about, then at the top of the ramp, if you turn right instead of left, and most people wouldn't singly go left, there is actually a neat little ladder just tucked really tinily into the corner. Climb up this and continue up the ball trap in between the rolling, and then on the left is a little alcove with a locked door, which can be opened with a trinity key like the one we just got. In this little room, there is a safe, go ahead and rip the door off that sucker to get you the black Cat's Amulet, which reduces fall damage, definitely some nice usage there, and you also get our next item, which is going to be the Monster Sweeper's Hunting Apparel. A nice, raggedy, rugged green outfit, very fitting, very fun, and hey, who doesn't like having more fashion options to choose from? Six up today is the Arch Heavyweight Frame. Moving on to the second Stargazer of Chapter 6, the Rosa Isabel Street Culvert. Progress from here until you have the shortcut right beside the Stargazer opened up. From there, continue along the street and up some staircases in this exact direction, just sort of progressing the level forwards. Then you will reach this spot here. When you first get here, there is a door on that wall, but if you get particularly close to it, an enemy will actually bust out of it and attack you, removing the door. After that, you can enter the room and open the safe in the back right of this room, and inside of it, you will find this defense part, which is just another along the line of increasingly heavier, but also more powerful physical damage resistance parts. Seventh, then, is the Technique Amulet. This is in Chapter 6 at the third Stargazer, the Estelle Opera House entrance. Head in here and up the stairs, then take a left. Then, behind the pillars is a long corridor. Head the right down here until you reach the end and you'll find a staircase, then follow the staircase down, and on your left will be a dark little corridor that you can follow to reach a chest. I've already opened it, so you won't see me open it here, but this chest contains the Technique Amulet, which quite simply gives you plus four to the Technique stat, a really solid amulet for anyone running a Technique-focused build. After that, we have a fun one, which is the Fascination Record. In order to get this, you basically have to do a little cheeky side quest, but a simple one. In Hotel Kratz, if you speak to your main puppet friend here at the front desk and ask to see what he sells, one of the items that he will sell is a big, bright red apple, relatively cheap. Buy this from him because you're about to finally see what it's actually used for. In Chapter 6 from the Estelle Opera House entrance Stargazer, if you head into the building, then go up the stairs on your right, there will be a staircase beside you to go up another level even further. Past some enemies, there is a small hallway that is easily missable from a lot of angles just due to its weird shape and the lighting around it. On the left through this hallway, though, you will find a closed door that you can open to find Adelina, the famed singer of this opera house. After a bit of dialogue, she'll say that she wishes she could taste fruit one more time. Give her the apple you bought, and then, well, you'll have to come back later. After you've defeated the big boss of this level, if you gave her an apple, you can then come back to her location to instead find the fascination record sitting there for you to pick up, along with Adelina's locket. Then, second to last, we have the incredible Vanini collection, which is a pretty important one, honestly, giving you access to multiple parts by way of being a pretty sizable shop upgrade for the Vanini butler bot. As far as getting it then, again from the Opera House entrance Stargazer, you must have progressed through the level enough to open this shortcut here in the middle in front of us, which makes it really quite quick and easy. Go into this room then, drop down the balance beam, and head into the corridor on your right. This will open up into a nice fancy hallway, take a right down the hallway, and at the end of the corridor is a little room with a number of enemies inside of it, and also a safe for once they're dealt with. Open the safe, and you'll get the incredible Vanini collection. And you can bring this to Puccinella at the Hotel Krat in order to significantly expand his inventory, including the addition of both a weapon and an amulet, as well as tons of other upgrade parts and parts in general that you can buy to mess with your gear. Finally then for today, we have a fun little scavenger hunt, but the first thing that you need to find is actually the puzzle itself. The easiest way of doing this is actually just right from where we were when we got our last item in the extravagant hallway of the Opera House. From that spot, go back out and run to the other end of the hallway to find some stairs, head up here for a big hallway full of enemies, and if you can reach the room that is the end of this corridor, there is a downward ladder, which most people will go down, but if you do it a little tight right turn and look behind you, you'll find a sneaky ladder on the wall that was just slightly out of view, leading up to a little hiding away chest inside of which is the jeweled cryptic vessel. If you then bring this vessel to Vanini inside of Hotel Krat, he will decode it for you, which will create a picture with a small hint. To solve this then, go to the very first stargazer of the game, Krat Central Station Plaza, and follow the main path forwards from here until you reach the first larger enemy. Behind him is a sort of long dead-end path that you could go to even right from the beginning of the game. If you do so, you'll get some dialogue from Gemini about Hotel Krat's, and that's your cue to say that you're in the right spot. Now, you may be confused because we're here 
there. We know we're in the right spot, but you don't have an item yet? That's the fun part. Go to your gestures and use check ground. This will literally perform that action, and as a result, you will find the Atones hunting at peril, as well as a Legion Caliber 2. A fun little puzzle to end it off, bonus costume and all. That'll do it for today, then, everyone. I hope this video has helped you out with providing the locations or even just information about the base existence of certain items or such that you just may not have been aware of. I hope you enjoyed the video as well, and let me know down in the comments if you'd like any more of these for even later on in the game itself. Like if you liked the video, subscribe to the notification bell for more, and most importantly, ladies and gentlemen, until next time, stay sweet. Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos Dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes Bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement To take our insanity and turn it into entertainment Yes, I said entertainment twice To reiterate that it is nice To look into your faces on a mostly daily basis When you let us in your homes to make the whole world a stage Is, uh, goodbye